what is up my warrior warriors and welcome back to another video and another train vlog so got the coffee as always but i thought i'd mix things up instead of a, a coffee compilation thing this morning we're just doing some morning mobility loosening off a lot of the stiffness of sleeping also before you ask these uh, joggers they're kind of new they're literally just like knitted and they are unbelievably comfortable i cannot explain it they're literally like they're wearing a jumper for your legs Right, so today's video and the kind of thing I wanted to talk about was following on from last week's video, we talked about lower body goals, how to be strong and flexible, which you guys love that video. And for me, it was a fun video to make and I'm looking forward to sharing some more lifting, flexibility sort of stuff. But of course, we can't forget the upper body. Really, let's be honest, the lower body doesn't really count. The upper body is the thing we're interested in and, and the thing that we want to develop. So as you know, obsessive handstands. Handstands is still kind of the main-ish focus, although I'm just putting a little bit less time into it. I'm still doing like four to six hours a week of training for the handstand, so still a lot. Uh, but in comparison to the kind of eight to 10 hours that I was doing a week when I was trying to train for the one arm, it's a lot less, which means I have more recovery to focus on other things, which is the fun strength stuff. So the kind of the main focus at the moment is actually turned to the 90 degree push-up. If you watch the last Road to One Arm Handstand episode, you'll see that I actually got my first set of five handstand push-ups freestanding, which has been a really hard one for me to work on. It's taken me a long time to build up those reps, but my handstand push-up's feeling strong. So I'm kind of taking that to the next level and I want to get the 90 degree push-up. Plus there is an added benefit of doing the 90 degree push-up is you actually end up training that bent arm planche position at the bottom, which is also gonna help support my other goal, which is of course the straddle planche. Next we have uh, the one arm chin up. Again, something that I've had in the past, but has never been super consistent. And it's been always quite intensive on the elbows but thankfully my elbows are in a good place now, I'm feeling strong and I kind of want to work back towards achieving it. I'm only training this once per week simply because again, the intensity, I don't want to increase that stress dramatically, cause any unnecessary injuries, but it'd be nice to have the one arm chin up back under my belt. And finally, it would be nice to gain a little bit more muscle mass. but I'm sure that one's on everyone's checklist. So I was gonna say that I wanted to be 91 kilos, but according to that, I am 91 kilos, but that is wearing um, all of these clothes and I've drunk like half a liter of water already this morning. So probably realistically, my usual weight is like 89 to 90 kilos. Either way, I wanna gain probably a kilo or two. Right, I've talked about it enough. Let's jump into that upper body session. Right, so let's kick things off. As always, we're starting off with some handstands. I'm not gonna spend too long on handstands because there's a whole separate series for that one. But essentially, Dave and I are both on the one arm. Dave is pretty close to doing this one arm. He can get some holds here and there. And, and, and that's kind of basically the, 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 the thought when it comes to doing one arms. We're just trying to get hold time. So for me, if I'm having a good day, I'll do that more of actual holds. And if it's a bad day, then I'll do it with fingertip support, straight arm supports. Essentially, there was a fair bit of handstand to begin with, but this is also kind of like an extended warm up. Let's talk briefly about warm up for this one as well. So. With the warm up, I like to go with a set of five and then a set of one to two as my second set and then I jump straight into my working set. And I like to keep it pretty easy. The set of five is very sub-maximal, so I might choose something that I can do for like 10, 12 reps and do it for a set of five just to kind of get things going. And then for the set of one to two, I might move up to kind of something I can do for six to eight reps. And then for the set of one to two, I'm gonna do something that's higher intensity, but again, I should still be able to do five, six, seven, eight reps or whatever it is I'm doing just to kind of prime tendons, connect tissue, all of that. And then from there, I jump into the training. This is especially important for things like one arm chin up. You definitely don't wanna jump into that one cold. So today's session is very eccentric bar. It's very negative bar. Both the one arm chin up and the 90 degree handstand push ups are moves that I can't do. So the best way to bridge that gap for the moment is by doing negatives and then attempting at my best effort to do the concentric, the pushing back up. I'll try to do it as best I can, but the main focus is on the negative portion. For the 90 degree handstand push-up, I'm working straddle. It just reduces the lever that little bit. 
because that makes it slightly easier to do um, because my focus is on getting that good quality sort of five to six second negative for the first rep I try to then get the push back up because I can occasionally do it and if I can't do it again the focus is on the negative you kind of keep as much as you can the tempo consistent all the way so the common mistake here would be that you would drop out of that bottom position because it gets harder the lower down you get but we're trying to hold that bottom position as well for the rep also doing the negatives here on a slight elevation of the hands the reason for that is because of the way that anatomy works with the middle splits you're going to need some sort of piking unless you've got really great hip flexibility or hip anatomy so that little bit of elevation allows for the piking so you can get the straddle wider makes it a little bit easier uh, but not so much that your feet are going to touch the floor in that bottom important position because the bottom position is the hardest the one arm chin ups as well kind of follow a similar pattern so I'm either going to try and do the one arm chin up on my right arm, which is the stronger arm, or I'll just use an assisted variation to get up to the top. And then I'm just doing that nice, slow, eccentric, consistent speed all the way down, nice and controlled, making sure it's like five to six seconds so we have decent time under tension. I'm only doing one rep on the one arm chin up just because I don't want to jump back in with loads and loads of volume because that is a good way to get injured when you go from zero to 100 kind of want to ease back into things. So to be honest, just one rep, enough to kind of work that eccentric bias, work on some tendon strengthening, not quite go to absolute max effort, but just start training that pattern in kind of an overloaded way. Then followed that up with some accessory movements that are going to support the primary goals. So in this case, we're doing some assisted 90 degree push-ups. This is kind of like a mixture of the planche push-up and the pike push-up. I think Fitness FAQ, Dan has actually done a whole video on this progression. I think it's a really great drill uh, and very, very intense, but it's probably one of the best ways to working towards your 90 degree push-up. Again, it focuses very much on that bottom position. We actually started this one with the feet elevated, uh, but decided later on that it was best done with the feet at just above kind of floor height, which would replicate best that kind of bottom 90 degree push-up position. This one is a great drill, but it's actually quite awkward to get the hang of because again, it's about coordination. It's about understanding how to lean forward and bend the arms at the same time. And that's also part of the challenge of just figuring out the 90 degree push-up is how to get back into that handstand push-up position to then press back up. So another reason why I like this drill, it's all about figuring out the move. For the one-up chin-up, it's a little bit more straightforward. I was just working uneven or mantle chin-ups, a little bit more straightforward, essentially just getting more reps in with that unilateral, so one side bias. Uh, actually, the handles that we ended up doing the chin-ups on were horrible, but I forgot to bring rings this time. Big mistake kind of hands are slipping everywhere and it makes a massive impact to how much you can actually pull is how strong your grip is in that one arm position. Finally, we finished up with a little bit of arms dominant work. For the triceps, we're just doing some normal dips, nice slow controlled tempo, and this is gonna have some translation over to that bottom position of the 90 degree push up. Again, it's kind of just more, more volume, more work on the triceps and also supporting a little bit of that mass gain focus that I kind of mentioned earlier. As for the arms, we're doing some heavy hammer curls I actually mentioned in a video recently about strengthening elbows and I mentioned hammer curls because of their really great for targeting kind of a little bit of that pronator position, targeting more the brachialis, the pronator terrace. It's just a really great drill, I think, especially for the one arm chin up because the one arm chin up is so elbow bicep intensive. So making sure your elbows are strong before doing your one arm chin up is going to make you much less likely to get injured from that movement. And I think out of all the movements in bodyweight training, the one arm chin up is the most likely to cause issues. Just making sure we're prepared. That's ultimately the best thing. And that is basically the session. As I said, I'm only doing this one once per week. So I'm doing one times per week upper body, one times per week lower body, and then I'm doing my handstands like four times per week. And I'm also doing a little bit of strength stuff like pressed handstand at the end of my handstand session. But essentially that's all the training I'm doing. With these sort of things that are very tendon intensive, I find that if people do like, for example, one arm chin training two, three times a week, that is where you see injuries happening. Once per week for those really kind of joint intensive movements is more than enough. If you feel like you need that twice per week stimulus, you're probably better off adding in something that's less joint intensive, but still hard. So instead of one arm chin ups, maybe doing weighted chin ups. Just an option. But I pass the question over to you. What are you training for at the moment? What's your upper body goals? What are you working on? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments section down below. If you just enjoyed this video, you know what you can do. You can always hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button. So you can join the Bodyweight Warwick tribe. So don't miss out on any more future videos. And finally, if you want to support me, support what I'm doing here, you can go over to Patreon and join the Discord server and all the other good stuff there. But 
that has basically been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and 